Here I'll discuss the different, different versions of L'Hopital's rule, which is extremely useful in calculating limits. And uh, if you try to figure out what functions are doing, then this is an utterly useful tool. So suppose we have two functions defined on some, on some open interval and assume that these are differentiable. And uh, also we consider some element a which might be in the interval i or it may be on the boundary of, of i, this open interval, then we treat two different cases. First case is where the limit of x to a of fx equals the limit of x to a of gx equals zero equals zero or the other case is the second case is where the limit of x to a fx yeah so the case where the limits from x to a fx and the limit of x to a from gx are both plus or minus infinity then what L'Hopital's rule says is that we may calculate the limit of x to a of the fraction fx divided by gx yeah, so the limit of x to a of fx divided by gx is the same as the limit of the respective derivatives divided on each other. So f prime x divided by g prime x. And this holds if only this limit exists or equals plus or minus infinity. Yeah, in the latter case, if it, if the limit f prime x divided by g prime x, the limit x to a is plus infinity, for instance, then the limit obviously does not exist, but then the limit of fx divided by gx for x to a is also infinity. Yeah, here an illustration, so um, look at the following. We want to study for the behavior of the sine of x divided by x. If we're close to zero, then both the nominator, numerator and denominator are close to zero. So it's hard to tell what happens. Well, L'Hopital's rule says that we may treat this as the case zero above zero, and we may calculate the limit by calculating the derivatives, since the derivative of g in this case is the derivative of x equals 1 is unequal to 0. So we may as well look at the limit for x to 0 of a cosine of x, which is the derivative of the numerator, divided by the derivative of g, which is 1. So now we obtain as a limit 1. Another example is the following. So now we have the zero as a boundary for the function x ln x. Yeah, so x ln x is, is, is well defined on zero infinity. And now we have a product. Well, there's some doubt what, what's going to happen. x goes to zero, but, but the ln of x goes to minus infinity. But we can write this as ln x divided by one over x. And we may apply L'Hopital's rule take a derivative of the ln x is 1 over x and the derivative of 1 over x equals minus 1 over x squared. So we get the limit of x going to 0 plus of minus x, which of course equals 0. Yeah, we may apply uh, L'Hopital here since 1 over x is g of x and if we take the derivative g prime of x is unequal to 0 if x is not equal to 0. So L'Hopital rules makes a special case in, in case we want to calculate the limit of fx divided by g of x, and it's not clear how to solve for these limits directly like we used to. Well, here's some other example. So let's say we take a limit of x to 0 of e to the power x minus 1 minus x divided by x squared. Yeah, so x squared goes to 0, but e to the power x minus 1 minus x also tends to 0. So what happens? This is the case 0 above 0. So we're going to apply L'Hopital's rule since the derivative of x squared is 2x. Yeah, so this is gx, which is unequal to 0, close to 0. 
Yeah, so divided by 2x. And the derivative of e to the power x minus 1 minus x equals e to the power x minus 1. And now what happens? Well, again, the numerator goes to 0, and e to the power x minus 1 goes to 0. So again, we may apply L'Hopital's rule. So doing so, so this is equals the limit of x going to 0 of e to the power x, which is a derivative of e to the power x minus 1, and 2 is a derivative of 2x. So in the end, we find that this limit is a half. Another example. The limit of x going to pi over 2 of the tangent 3x divided by the tangent x. We see that when x uh, is close to pi over 2 that yeah, we either have the tangent uh, from the right hand side with the tangent going to minus infinity and from the left hand side we get infinity. So this is the case infinity above infinity. So where f x and g x are plus or minus infinity, or 10 to minus plus or minus infinity. So this equals applying L'Hopital's rule, the limit of x going to pi over 2. We take a derivative of the tangent of 3x, which equals 3 times 1 over the cosine squared of 3x. And the derivative of the tangent equals 1 over the cosine squared. And it's clear that we we're allowed to use L'Hopital here since the g of x, which equals the tangent of x, has a derivative unequal to 0 as long as x is not equal to pi over 2. Again, we have a problem since when x goes to pi over 2, then the cosine of 3x and the cosine squared of x tend to 0. Well, there's a solution to this. Uh, we just rewrite this as 3 times the cosine squared divided by the cosine squared of 3x. And this again is the case 0 above 0. Another time application of L'Hopital's rule gives 3 times the limit of x to pi over 2. And now we de we'll just derive the derivative of the cosine squared by the product rule, so minus 2 times sine x cosine x divided by minus 6 sine 3x times the cosine 3x. And now we split the limits over here. So what happens is the non-problematic part are the sine of x and the sine 3x, since these take actually normal values in pi over 2. So we may write 3 times the limit of x to a pi over 2 of minus 2 sine x divided by minus 6 sine 3x times the limit of x to pi for x going to pi over 2 of the cosine x divided by the cosine 3x provided this limit exists. Here you may only split and to product of limits if if both of the limits exist. Well, for on the left hand side there's no question about this since uh, these are continuous function sine of x divided by the sine of 3x so there's no issue. On the right hand side there's an issue still because the cosine of x goes to 0 for x going to pi over 2 and the cosine of 3x goes to 0 and pi over 2. But this is, again, one of the cases treated by L'Hopital's rule. So we get 3 times minus 2, since the sine of x goes to 1 in pi over 2, and minus 6 times the limit of x to pi over 2, and then the derivative of the cosine of x is minus sine of x, divided by 3 times minus 3 times the sine of 3x. So this should be plus 6 instead of minus. Now the remaining limit is, is trivially to solve. So we get minus 1 times, well, minus sine of x tends to minus 1, and minus 3 times the sine of 3x goes to 3, so we end up with plus 1 third as a limit.